Hello, my name is Roy Tomalina with BMX. During this short video, I'll be showing you the documenting calibrator mode of the MC6. In another video, we cover the calibrator mode of the MC6. In this one, we're taking the next step. That's the documenting calibrator. This mode allows you to do automatic calibration as well as paperless documentation of your calibration. From the main menu, we choose documenting calibrator. Now, in this scenario, we'll create the tag or the device manually. We have two options here. We could do the menu button. We have different items here. One of them is create new. We can create a new instrument. We can create a group, which we cover in a couple of our other videos. If we had a number of tags, we could sort them alphabetically. We could sort them based on their due date or when they were created. We could show all of the devices. We could show just the ones that were calibrated or maybe just show everything that we still have to do. Everything that has not been calibrated or that's in a failed status. That's right here. We can also list based on plant structure, a hierarchy of your plant, and then you can browse, you can search for a specific tag or maybe just go right to the end of the list. Under Manage, you have the ability to delete all of the devices or delete all the test results. Let me close that. If I'm creating a new tag, I don't even go there. Inside the calibrator, anytime you have the option to create something new, there's a yellow star next to it. So that's what I prefer. Hit the yellow star, then we create a, a new device. We have pages here on the right-hand side. The first page is always the input. So in this case, it's RTD we'll be calibrating an RTD temperature transmitter. But what if you were calibrating a pressure switch? We change the quantity from RTD over to pressure. Then we go down to the next page and instead of quantity current, we choose switch. Instead of switch, maybe you are calibrating a pressure indicator. So we, are, we still have pressure on the input we can choose keyed as our output. Let's see what that looks like. That tells the technician that we're measuring pressure on the input and it tells what port to hook up to. We do have pressure ports across the top here. And we'll be keying in the values of the output. So you're pumping up pressure, maybe you have the display in front of you or maybe the display is in a control room and you're listening over the radio to get the value to punch in. But let's get back to my temperature transmitter. In this case, I want the quantity to be RTD temperature. Quantity, we'll go current. Now, we can specify each of the values and the parameters, punch those in, but we can also pull them from the device if it is a smart device. So this happens to be a heart-based temperature transmitter, but we can also do this with a foundation field bus or a profi bus. And that option is called get mapped values. This starts up the communicator. And in this case, we'll actually have to plug it in. So in this case, we're starting up the heart communicator. And this will pull in the values. You see the activity right there. As we go down, we can see that it is output current. We can see that it's 0 to 100 degrees input. It's 4 to 20 milliamps out. We're set up for a 5-up test strategy, which that's fine. If we want this to be an automatic calibration, we tick this box on the bottom, automatic acceptance. Stability check means that we have a stable signal that it's not noisy or drifting up or down, but it is flat and stable. Error tolerance. The default is a half a percent of span, but maybe you want it to be plus or minus a half a degree or maybe plus or minus a quarter of a degree. That's simple. We just change our error calculation method, change it over to engineering units, Maybe I want this to be plus or minus 0.4 degrees. 
The manufacturer and the model has been brought over automatically. I could fill this in with a location. Now the sensor is not here, so that's blank. We're simulating the input. The position ID, which is also the tag ID, same thing. And device ID come over automatically along with the serial number. If I go down again, it just cycles back up to the top of the list. Let's hit the check mark. So we've created our tag from scratch. We didn't have to bring it over from a database. This shows us where I hook up my input. My input, it goes right here. So we are simulating our RTD. So we'll be sourcing resistance to simulate the temperature. Our output is already hooked up. That's right here. By pressing the green check mark, we're in our calibration screen. Now, it's waiting for me to press start, but before I do that, let me just cover a couple things. You get a live error reading right here on top of the graph. So no matter where you are, you can see real time if you have an error at this current position or not. And keep in mind, on the bottom right, it will show you what the current test point is that it's driving to. So when we start it, it will say zero degrees in and that it's expecting four milliamps out. And that's more critical on pressure calibrations that you're perform performing where you're actually increasing the pressure with a pump or doing manual intervention. Let's press start. We do have the option at any time to pause the calibration. Maybe one of the leads might pop off. That's a good time to pause it, reconnect and restart. The zero, look at the graph. The zero, if the dot is on there, that means that it's passing. The blue lines above and below, that's our tolerance. We've got a dip in the midsection, but overall everything's green. And did it pass or fail? How can we know? We can look right here. Passed, it's obvious. It's a big passed in green. If it failed, it would be failed in red with the same font size. We get a rundown of the calibration event, our maximum error, and our significance. The significance is how much of our error did we actually utilize with that maximum error. So we used 70% of our tolerance that was available to us. We can put in notes. We can assign who did the calibration. We get a graph of what we just did. Raw data. This is it. So in this case, you could take this and you could write it down on a piece of paper, file it away, or you could take these numbers and you can enter it into a database somewhere, maybe a spreadsheet, or you could unload this automatically into a database like CMX calibration software and never have to type or touch a pen to paper to get the results transferred. So I'll save this as found and we're done. If we had to do a trim, we could do that. We could just hit the menu button up here, start communicator, perform the trimming functions. But we are complete. Now it's off to our next calibration. For more information about our MC6 calibrator, check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.